Right, welcome to this next video where uh, I want to share with you something which I don't normally do. What I mean by that is generally I um, focus on manufacturing. But during the past two or three weeks, I was involved with the education implementation. And uh, yes, yeah, so to quickly enable that and get my head stuck into education. Quite interesting. And once again, quite great how the um, guys that wrote the software did their use cases, you know, very flexible. Uh, and a little bit of a reminder for everybody that perhaps you need some reminding. You can use ERP Next in all of these fields. Retail, which is your, your shop where you sell your sugar and your milk and your bread. Manufacturing, of course, is the one I'm using. And I enabled education now. But healthcare, you know, your patient, doctor, set up, hospitality, your bed and breakfast, agriculture, if you've got a farm, non-profit, if you receive stuff and you help the needy, you know, you distribute it. Distribution, you know, you buy stuff and you put it on a website and you just sell it straight. You don't actually do any value add. And services, if you clean somebody's windows. So you can actually use it, in this case, education. But I think... <clears throat> um, what I think I need to do is uh, I'm not going to make one video covering everything then it becomes too long we don't all like watching one and a half hour videos on YouTube so first first off I'm going to see or, or share with you how I set up the system and then in subsequent videos the next one will do how you accept students for your courses um, and then perhaps another one where you do the assessment and the uh, uh, attendance records. Battling for the word attendance there. <laughs> so first up, we'll have a look at just the system settings. And by that, I mean really the low-level ones, uh, because there's obviously some setup to be done in terms of courses. You know, what's the course content? I'm only going to do system settings in this video. So let's get cracking. We click on uh, education and right here by settings we find everything. Um, now you see academic year. There you would create your academic year, whichever you're in. And of course your academic term, if you use that. When it's a, if you've got a course, ah, a college, university set up, you use semesters. If you've got a school set up, you use term. If you've got your own online business, you may not want to use these. So it's all up to you. And then you go to education settings and you select those. All right, so that's the current academic year and the current academic term. I would suggest you consider ticking this uh, because while I was playing around, you know, when you open up the learning management system, which is the portal where students can actually uh, sign up, every time a student signed up, it creates a user on your account. So if you've got 300 students, you're going to have 300 users users on your system. And I'm not sure if you want to. So just consider that. And next up, covered, covered grading scale. This, of course, is your scale, which you use 100% A+. This doesn't come default. You've got to fill it in. All right? So you can uh, um, choose your levels, your your 90% level, whatever, and your or your A level rather. Okay, you can create more than one grading scale. Not too sure why you'd want to do that, but you can. Uh, and of course, student batch and student category. These are grouping functions which I don't use or didn't use, but within the school context, I can quite see that it is possible. Um, but it's it they you know there's a batch one and a batch two and and of course student category comes in where you perhaps have a engineering setup where you've got a technician engineer and a supervisor so you can um, allocate this these categories to each student that signs up for a course and you can now assign but then the system will only allow you to group the engineers together, all the supervisors together for a course. So if that's important to you, you can use that. It's not. So I just set up, you know, one batch. Everybody belongs to one batch. That's the way you can circumvent it. I suspect you can also even 
just hide that field and not use it because it's not a mandatory field. Uh, you can even get away with that. I must just double check that, but I'm not very sure about that. Right, room, of course. Um, I've only got one online room. If you've got a school, you're going to have 10 or 15 of these rooms. Same with a university and a college. All right, so you just create a new one there. And then, of course, your instructor. You know, how many instructors do you have? A school would, and a university would have much more than your startup online uh, training business. Okay, and then this, these three are rather important. And what you'll notice is I, I'm, I'm trying to show the link between these things. When we get to signing up students, I'll show you the link between student application and student, like the student and student application. Aren't they the same? They're not the same. I'll show that to you. What's the link between a student group and your course schedule? I'll show you that to you. And once you tweak these links, then it becomes rather easy to set this, this thing up. All right, clearly a course consists of topics and a program consists of courses. Okay, but now the trick here is how you define this. All right, now keeping in mind, and this is also a rather important point to remember, and this will also clarify many things. You sign a student up for a program, not for a course. And once again, keeping in mind for what ERP Next probably was geared for towards your college and your university. What do you have at college? You've got uh, um, an M or a B Eng uh, engineering program. And then you've got a B Agric for agricultural and B Com or whatever. Those are the types of programs. But a student that signs up for a program attends all the courses in that program. All right? And a student that signs up for one program can't attend a course in another program. Okay, now this is rather important statements which I'm making because in my case, I wanted a setup where students can choose whichever course they want to attend. There's 10 or 15 courses and one year they'd attend course A and then next year they attend course B. But I can't have a different programs. It'll limit the, the course that you that the student can attend because now the student needs to reapply for another program and that's all very romantic. But uh, the system's going to pick up that the email address is already on the system. It's a duplicate email. So rather sign up a student, in my case, once for the program, and then subsequently you can, oh, he's already a student on the system, just reassign him to another course. All right. So the relationship between these are rather important and how you define it. In my case, for instance, I didn't have, you know, B tech, B agri, Bcom, whatever. I just have one heading, company courses. And all the courses are listed here. <clears throat> so any student can attend any course. I think you catch my drift. Uh, if you, if you, obviously, if you have different diplomas, you can use program per diploma. But remember, a student gets signed up per program. And you'll see that when we get to that video. And of course, each course has got different topics. Okay, so there's all the topics listed. And it also adds the criteria, the assessment criteria. And this is listed here. All right. Now the <clears throat> topics and the criteria. I would suggest think it over before you define it. In my case, I found it rather helpful to be a little bit more generic. Not to say CPU and hard disk and screen, but rather have hardware. In my case. Yours might be different, and the same with criteria. Uh, yes, certainly for a math course, you want what's the criteria when you assess the student? Can they add? Can they multiply? Can they subtract? Uh, in a more different type of course, 
you might not have it a separate criteria but just mathematics ability okay because remember this criteria that you set up here is almost like a global criteria and topic list it gets used for all the courses so for a particular course you would have topic one two and five and then for another course you would have topic three and four all right so now you understand keep it a little bit more general uh, then you can use one topic in more than one course. All right. All right. I think. Oh, and I think. Well, yeah, let me just reiterate. As you can see on the course, you you list your topics and your criteria, and of course your grading scale. Okay. I think that is about it in terms of setting up the system settings. With the next video we can actually have a look at uh, how we uh, receive the application of a student and how that ties up with uh, actually being a student on the system. Hope to see you on that video.